Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Helen Birch, your sex educator and sexual freedom coach. If you're new here, we discuss everything related to sexual health, relationships, sexual dysfunctions and much more. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe and to share it with your friends. So today I am so excited to share with you 10 ways to enhance your sexual pleasure and performance. So let's dive right in. Number one, effective communication. Effective communication is key to fulfilling sexual relationships. Start by discussing your preferences, desires and any concerns with your partner in a neutral setting. Remember, open and honest communication lays at the foundation for a satisfying intimate connection. And I know that this sounds super easy, but you'd be surprised to know how many clients of mine come and tell me about their issues. And then I ask them, how does your partner feel about it? And they say, well, I don't know. I've never really spoke to them about it or asked them about it. I just wanted to make sure that I'm okay. So I ask them, what do they find pleasure from when having intercourse? Things such as how do they find pleasure from other things? And sometimes my clients are just not sure. And it's not their fault because no one taught us how to communicate about sex. It's not something that you learned in sex education and it's not something that your parents really talk about. Okay, so how do we start off communicating? Well, I'm just gonna give you some tips first of all. So first off, um, I just want you to make sure that you don't actually have a serious communication conversation right before or after you're just about to be intimate with your partner, as this can either create a shared meaning that you're not intending. Um, it can also then become intimate and it can lead to somebody also feeling insecure about it. You might think that you have brought up how you would like to try something else and your partner may misinterpret this and say, hey, there's something wrong with me and I'm not providing you with enough pleasure. And so it's really important to do this in a neutral location either when you're having breakfast or at lunch or when you're out somewhere having a walk or something else where you can have that serious communication but it can be in a casual manner. Okay, number two, realise that it's going to take many conversations. You're not just going to have that one conversation and it's open um, and all your problems are solved because I've never really had those communications with someone before. So it's going to be a bit awkward and it's probably going to start off by saying, hey, I really like to make this part of our relationships when we talk about our intimate time, about how sex and about how we can enjoy each other. Maybe we can start talking about it today um, just to start the conversation and then revisit it in a more serious manner at a later date. Okay, number three, when you're talking about it, you want to make it about yourself. Say, I would really like to, if we could do this more often or if we could do more of this, how do you feel about that? Um, and this is rather than saying, I don't like it when we do this um, or I don't like it when you do that because basically this ends up making the other person feel inferior or have a bad negative image of themselves or feel like they're being attacked or doing something wrong sexually. And lastly, if you or your partner is complaining of sexual dysfunctions or something that could be a medical issue such as having issues with erection pain or maybe even just losing your balance um, when you are trying something different then it is important to get professional help whether that means seeking a sex therapist or a counsellor that can help you either communicate these things or figure out the individual components. Um, you may also need to see a doctor or a urologist. Um, there are tons of options to help you get better in all of those areas. And so it really is important to just pick apart um, what it is that may be the issue 
if it is something that might need some more external help or if it's something that just having communication and conversation with your partner can help. Okay. Number two is experimentation. Be open to exploring new techniques and activities both alone and with your partner. Be open to masturbating with each other, asking and learning from masturbation. So that's really going to be a great way to explore your body and figure out what you like and what you don't like. Masturbation can help you discover what you enjoy and then you can communicate that with your partner experimenting with different erogenous zones and activities can also lead to new levels of intimacy and pleasure try reframing masturbation and instead of thinking oh they're finding pleasure from themselves and that's because i can't give them the pleasure i'm going to be replaced it's more about thinking hey this is great my partner is confident and finding pleasure and is then able to communicate that with me and certainly this is useful in relationships where there might be mismatched libido meaning that somebody might be really wanting to have sex a lot you can take part in mutual masturbation you can experiment with each other so that you can talk and figure out which parts of the body or which erogenous zones um, you like take some time with that partner and learn that every person is different for some people it can be the nipples the ears the toes the inside of the elbow and so actually figuring out what areas for each individual person causes them to be aroused can actually make it more fun and hopefully more enjoyable because you can see where there are other areas um, and how each partner is different. So things that you could do is to map these areas of the brain. For example, the brain has different networks. So if you get pleasure from having your earlobe touch, this may be the same pleasure that might get in the genitals and that is just your brain making those connections. So please don't be ashamed think you're strange or weird if a certain area is turning you on that isn't a traditional conventional area to be turned on. So experimenting can make a whole new or different way of achieving pleasure. Some people have even recommended things like mapping out your mind, um, what you like, so you can get like a marker, washable obviously, and mark out the areas on your body that you think you might enjoy being touched, um, and some areas that might be a no-go area, um, so that you can feel confident and safe knowing that your partner's not going to touch those areas that you don't feel as comfortable with. Um, if you're not ready for that kind of things, you could even put like a little cross in a certain area, a red or a green colour, um, or maybe even a yellow colour to suggest that it's something that you would like to try but you're not sure um, and maybe take it slowly in those areas of the body. So when you are trying new things, continue that conversation. Just because you're trying to be intimate doesn't mean that you've stopped communicating the whole time. Communicate, yes, I like this, no, I don't list, I don't like it, and don't take it personally. You're experimenting together and figuring out what you both like and do not like. Okay, number three, stimulate the clitoris. So for women, clitoral stimulation is often essential for achieving orgasm. Understanding the clitoris and incorporating its stimulation into your sexual activities can significantly enhance pleasure and satisfaction for both partners. And the reason being is that 80 to 90% of women need clitoral stimulation in order to climax, whether that clitoral stimulation is with penetration or without. And that is because the clitoris was originally part of the penis. And what this means is that they both developed from the same tissue when you were in the womb. And so as the fetus develops, it's decided if it was going to be XY chromosome to be male, or if it was going, and that would mean it would develop into a penis, um, or if it got the signal to be XX chromosome, which is female, giving the signal to develop that tissue into a clitoris. And they are basically all the same, except that the clitoris is everything sorry the penis everything outward and the clitoris has the tiny outward bit plus all the inward parts um, and this comes in kind of a wishbone shape on the inside 
So it can be that when you're deriving pleasure, most often it is because their clitoris is extended on the inside of the vagina as well as the outside of the vagina. So it's important again to experiment to figure out what your partner likes best and this may or may not be having just penetrative sex and this brings me on to my next thing which is increasing your foreplay. Foreplay plays a crucial role in arousal and lubrication especially in women. Take the time to engage in sensual activity and build up anticipation before intercourse. Remember Patience and exploration can lead to heightened pleasure for both partners. Foreplay can help both men and women, but particularly women, as it can take women around 10 to 30 minutes to achieve full arousal. So what exactly does this mean? Well, as women are achieving arousal, their vagina creates lubrication and it can take some time for the body to signal, to say, hey, I'm aroused, and then for this signal to move through the body um, and signal to the body to start making lubrication. Also, as the body becomes aroused, the vagina widens um, and this means that it becomes more ready to accommodate an erect penis, making it much more comfortable and pleasurable. So if you go too fast and you're not fully aroused, it can actually mean that sex is painful, especially deep penetration. Use lubrication. Lubrication can enhance comfort and pleasure during sexual activity, whether you're experiencing vaginal dryness or simply want to reduce friction. Using lubricants can make intercourse more enjoyable for everyone involved. And just let me take a minute to just talk a little bit more about lubrication. So the lubrication of a woman does not correlate with how turned on they are all the time. Um, there are certain things that happen in one's life where a woman may be less lubricated um, and they may just mean that there could also be genetic differences. And this can be because of hormonal changes, going through the menopause where the body actually changes and has less estrogen. So the tissues become thinner, less lubrication and all that is just part of going through the menopause, nothing to do with a female's arousal. Certainly there are treatments to help with the thinness um, such as vaginal oestrogen. So if you are a woman watching this or going through the menopause or perimenopause, then please talk to your doctor about medication or hormones um, which can be used to make sex more pleasurable, to make it less painful and also give you that additional lubrication. This also is for things such as if you've just had a baby or if you've had surgery where they've reduced the oestrogen and this can be things such as certain medication as well. Um, it has nothing to do with you or how turned on you are or with the effectiveness of your partner as a lover. Um, it just is your body going through changes. So which again brings me to my next point, which is use lubrication. Lubrication is fun, it's great, it's cheap, and it's a really easy, fast solution for enhancing your sexual pleasure. Okay, so what about men? Well, I think for men again, communication is going to help you understand what you like and what you don't like, and also to learn that all men are not the same. But the important thing is that men do have a lot of pressure to perform, um, things such as lasting long enough, providing that sexual pleasure. And it's important to realize that it's not a sign that there is something wrong with a man if you suddenly can't get the erection or you can't last as long as you would like. So it could be to do with something that you've had to drink, it could be to do with a medical problem, medication or just a temporary medical condition. And so all of these things need to be taken together. It's really not usually about the partner. So there are other ways that you can feel your pleasure um, with each other and there are other ways of doing this other than just penetration. So it's important to realise that everyone's got fingers, everyone's got a mouth, we've got toys that we can buy and you can use all those things differently to help increase pleasure whether or not you have a functioning penis or not. Managing stress. 
So stress can negatively impact sexual desire and performance. And it's important to have relaxation techniques incorporated into your routine, such as massage, yoga or meditation. This will help reduce stress levels and promote intimacy. When you're stressed, it releases cortisol. It turns on your sympathetic nervous system and you will be putting your body into fight or flight mode. Basically, your body is getting ready to run. And this increases blood flow to the extremities to help you get all that energy to the muscles so that you can do whatever activity that you need to do, which is basically to get away from the stress or the threat. But in reality, you have to differentiate between a stressor like a lion coming after you or a stressor like you've had a rough day at work, but your body doesn't know the difference. So if you're stressed, you're just not going to be able to get that blood flow to the genitals because it's working and sending that blood flow somewhere else. It's much harder to get it around. So in order to increase pleasure, you can actually incorporate some sort of couples relaxation before you get into it. You could do things such as a massage, maybe just listen to some music. Um, you could even do yoga together before having sex. And those things that can help relax your body, know that it is in a safe state and tell your body that it is safe to get aroused and excited about sex. Schedule intimacy. In our busy lives, scheduling intimacy may seem unusual, but it can be incredibly beneficial. Setting aside dedicated time for each other allows you to prioritise your relationships and focus on intimacy without distractions. So lots of people assume that sex is just something that we want to do, that we should just have that thought or that stimulation, we just get excited about each other and we have sex, when in reality that's not what happens. We're busy, we've got kids, we've got work, we've got lots of responsibilities and it's not the same as when you were younger. When you were younger you had more time, less stress and you also had those hormones that helped you to get really excited when you saw your partner and to get aroused quickly. But when you're in a longer term relationship or older or you have other stresses in your life, it's more than just seeing your partner and being turned on and going into that spontaneous sex like you used to. And that's because there are two different types of desire. There is spontaneous desire, which is exactly as described. You see your partner, you get excited, you have sex. And then there is responsive desires. You don't necessarily get aroused just by seeing them or thinking about them. But when you're together, when you're intimately connected, holding hands with each other, touching each other, being emotionally available for each other, just being there with each other, then that creates that responsive arousal. And you can remember, oh yeah, my body likes this. Um, it's telling you that I want to have sex with this person. I fancy them, they're attractive. And so it actually requires you to take the time to be together and not be on your phones, in bed, um, actually meaning that you are present and with each other. And that is where scheduling time comes in. We are in an overscheduled culture. Um, you will probably have calendars full of things to do and to-do lists full of things to do. And you might schedule a date night because that's what happens. But then you go on that date night and you eat tons of food and your body gets focused on digesting that food. You start to feel bloated and uncomfortable. And the last thing you want to do is then feel sexy and be intimate. And that is not the greatest setup for intimate time. So schedule a time for actual intimacy where you're going to turn off your phones. Um, you're going to really focus in on each other and just be intimate. And that includes all that hugging, that touching, looking into each other's eyes. It doesn't mean that you're going to have sex, but it's then on the table if you both want it. Practice mindfulness. Being present and mindful during sexual activity can enhance pleasure and connection with your partner. Focus on the sensations, emotions and connection you experience in the moment, letting go of distractions and worries. 
when we let the thought come and come in and go away um, and think I'm just going to focus on what's going on, whether it's how my partner is holding me, how they're touching me, how good they smell, or just how nice it feels to be in their arms, um, or how nice it just feels to have their undivided attention. It just means that you can actually focus on those senses and it can lead to overall better sex life, better pleasure and definitely better orgasm. Embrace physical exercise. Regular exercise not only benefits your overall health, but can also improve sexual arousal and performance. Engaging in activities like walking, swimming or strength training to boost your energy levels and enhance sexual satisfaction. So we all know that exercise is overall good for you. It helps reduce stress, helps you feel great, maybe even helps you lose weight. But ultimately, exercise has also been linked with sexual arousal. And that can be things such as the walking, training together, lifting weights. All those things lead to increased sexual arousal. In fact, in one study, they found that people who engaged in intense exercise ended up having stronger orgasms later and I do have a video on this and I'll add the link here. Enjoy the journey. Above all remember that sexual pleasure is not about just reaching orgasm. Embrace the journey of exploration, connection and intimacy with your partner. Enjoy each moment together and celebrate that unique bond that you share. I hope that you have found these tips in enhancing your sexual pleasure and performance useful. Remember that every individual and relationship is unique, so feel free to explore and discover what works best for you and your partner. So if you are interested in diving into overcoming any sexual shame that you might have and embracing your sexual freedom, then I invite you to download my free ebook on the topic. The link is going to be added to the description box below. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care of yourself and have a great day. Bye bye for now.